Okay, we all have at least one relative that just drives up, up the wall with emails. Mine happens to be my aunt. She used to be a really loving, sweet, open-minded individual, which is saying something from the family I come from. Um, unfortunately, when her husband passed away, she turned to the Baptist church for moral support. And she, we all thought it was going to be a phase. We thought that, you know, yes, she'll probably continue going to church after the initial shock of losing her husband had worn off. Um, he died suddenly at home. So it really was a shock to all of us. We thought once the initial shock, the initial mourning period, you know, maybe a year, year and a half, that she'd kind of come back to her old open-minded self. Instead, she's gotten worse. She uses her Baptist religion as a platform for discrimination against anybody who's not Baptist, as a platform for anti-immigration, racism. Pretty much, if you want to change the way our country works, if you want to say anything about any religion other than Baptist, um, she has she she has an argument against you. So those are the kind of emails I deal with most from her. But every once in a while, I get these basically urban legend emails. You know, the ones about don't flash your headlights at other cars because they're full of black kids who want to kill you. And if you don't know, that's, that's BS. Nobody, there has never been any proof that this is a true occurrence. Um, so for a while, you know, after I introduced her to Snoops.com, for a while I stopped getting these emails because she actually started checking Snoops.com before she would forward an email. Unfortunately, the people writing the emails now, the people who originate the stories, are putting things like, this has been checked on snoops.com and is therefore true um, at the beginning of all their emails. So now I'm, I'm just, I am bombarded with all these emails that are true because, oh, somebody checked it on snoops.com. The thing is, is you can log into snoops.com and look it up yourself and <laughs> it's not there. It's, it, it is disputed. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to read you the email, then I'm going to go to Snoops and I'm going to read you what they say. No wonder more folks are dying from cancer than ever before. We wonder where this stuff, stuff comes from, but here's an example that explains a lot of the cancer causing incidents. Hmm. Many people are in their cars first thing in the morning and last thing at night, seven days a week. As I read this, it makes me feel guilty and ill. Please pass this on to as many people as possible. Guess it's not too late to make some changes. Car air conditioning, a must read. Please do not turn on AC as soon as you enter the car. Open the windows after you have entered your car and turn on the AC after a couple of minutes. Here's why. According to a research, the car dashboard, seats, air freshener, and everything else emit benzene, a cancer-causing to toxin, a carcinogen. Take time to absorb the smell of heated plastic in your car. In addition to causing cancer, benzene poisons your bones, causing anemia and reduces white blood cells. Prolonged exposure will cause leukemia, increasing the risk of cancer. It can also cause miscarriages. Accord okay, acceptable benzene levels indoors is 50 milligrams per square foot. A car parked indoors with the windows closed will contain 400 to 800 milligrams of benzene. If parked outdoors under the sun at a temperature above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the benzene level goes up to 2,000 to 400 milligrams per square foot, 40 times the acceptable level. Right there, um, their math is off. That's actually 80 times the acceptable level. People who get into the car keeping the windows closed will inevitably inhale in quick succession excessive amounts of, tox of the toxin. Benzene is a toxin that affects your kidneys and liver. What is worse is it is extremely difficult for your body to expel this toxic stuff. 
So friends, please open the windows and doors of your car. Give time for the interior to air out. Dispel the deadly stuff before you enter. Now let's go to snoops.com and see what they say. Now they have done, scientists have done research on this, okay? A considerable number of human studies provide evidence linking benzene and cancer. Initially increased risk of leukemia uh, were reported among workers with high levels of benzene exposure to the chemical in shoemaking and oil refining industries. More recently, studies have focused on workers who with relatively low exposure. The human data was, was supported by animal studies. There is significant evidence for the carcinogenic chemical benzene in experimental animals. Key animal studies support the finding of an excess risk of leukemia in humans exposed from benzene by inhaling and ingestion. The details of these studies have been reviewed and found to support the association between benzene and cancer. However, the study found that traveling by automobile increases exposure to the number of uh, compounds, including benzene. But the primary factor in this regard was the fuel used by the vehicles, not the actual components of the vehicles. The study found that benzene levels were higher in older cars than new cars which suggests that the primary factor in automobile benzene levels is not the association with the new car smell, the plastic smell, the dashboard, etc., etc., et cetera, emitted by components such as dashboards and upholstery. The study found that exposure levels were significantly higher during the winter months, which suggests that automobile air conditioning is of no major factor in benzene exposure. This study itself did not establish a connection between car driver exposure and the onset of cancer. So just to reiterate, this email claims that using your air conditioner will it, okay, if you don't air your car, you're going to end up with cancer because of benzene. However, when they actually studied this phenomenon, it has absolutely nothing to do with the interior of your car. It has to do with the amount of gas fumes you inhale. And no offense, that is backed up by the uh, higher levels in winter months because people preheat their cars, which allows the fumes to get inside the car because when you're driving, the fumes are emitted from the back of your car and they're blown away from your car. When your car is just sitting there idling, whether you're at a stoplight, uh, pre-warming your vehicle, whatever, the gas fumes actually waft up over the car and you are exposed to higher levels of this benzene. So the point is, is that if you get this email, just delete it because it's complete bullshit. Excuse my language. Um, you are actually at higher risk of benzene exposure during the winter months when you're preheating your car and when it's running less efficiently due to the cold. Um, how can you limit your exposure? Don't preheat your car. It's good for the environment if you don't do this, and it's good for you if you don't do this. So don't preheat your car anymore, okay? Um, it will actually warm up faster and save you gas um, by just simply driving your car for a few minutes before you turn the heaters on. Anyway, so that's all I have to say. I'm sorry it took nine minutes, and have a great day.